Tonight on Nightline, American Idol, Paula Abdul, the show's sweetheart judge, speaks out in her most revealing interview ever. It's Paula Abdul as you've never seen her before in tonight's exclusive Nightline interview. This is Nightline, April 23rd, 2009. Good evening, I'm Cynthia McFadden. Tonight, we delve into the popular culture. American Idol is the biggest show on television. Tens of millions of viewers religiously tune in to follow their favorite contestant. But fans also tune in for the judges. And it's the nice judge, the one who always tries to find something kind to say to the kids with stars in their eyes, a number one recording artist in her own right, who has faced the cruelest scrutiny. Paula Abdul agreed to sit down with me to set the record straight. We're going live. <laughs> We're going to touch up really quickly. This is backstage, to, uh, which is my home away from home, for eight years now. And uh, each year it gets bigger and bigger. This is American Idol. We are backstage in Los Angeles at the number one television show in the country, American Idol, with the controversial, unsinkable Paula Abdul for a backstage tour and a no-holds-barred interview. And this is where we all kind of congregate right before the show, and then the judges, we walk up behind the curtains, and the doors open up, and we're, we're like this. And Simon grabs my hand, and messes with me. Please welcome your judges. Simon, of course, is Simon Cowell, who for eight seasons has played her foil, supporter... Well, you were actually funny. Shut up. You <laughs> were. ...and tormentor. You just I'm not accusing you. Simon, I don't have a problem saying anything in front of your face. Are you nervous? I'm, I'm not nervous. I'm more nervous about what is he going to try to do to uh, mess me up. The possibilities are endless, it seems, in that regard. There was the night just a few weeks ago he drew a mustache on her. And just this week, he was at it again. Sorry, Chris, I have no idea what that meant. He shops in women's. Anyway. No, he doesn't. No worries. Chris, um, the, oh, sh- pull up. She certainly worked hard to earn her seat at the idle table as the nice judge. And there's no doubt America's loving you right now. From her days as a Laker girl... to award-winning choreographer and top-selling recording artist. 20 years ago, her single, Straight Up, went all the way to number one. Lots of folks have talent. Not very many of them have six number one singles. You know, it's funny with the six number one singles. I was a girl who was told, I'll never make it. You're too short. You don't have the right skin color. Your hair's not the right color. I was always told I'm either too much, I'm not enough, or they'd overlook me completely. No one's overlooking her now, especially not her nemesis, Simon. I will bow to the god of Paula Abdul. For more than 20 million viewers every week, their on-screen antics are a key to the show's success. He's a bully. That's, you know, you can't take that away. He's a masterful bully. You look a little odd. Your dancing is terrible. The singing was horrendous. And you look like one of those creatures that live in the jungle with those massive eyes. So of all the egos, is Simon's the biggest? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. The first day that I went to work on season one, I quit seven times. Seven times. Why? I just couldn't take the pain that I saw. And, and I think being an artist who's had success, it is very vulnerable when, you're, when you are the talent. And when someone attacks you with criticism that isn't constructive at some times, it's hard to take. Also hard to take were allegations four years ago that she was having an affair with a contestant, Corey Clark. That got her in real trouble. A charge she denied and the show dismissed after an investigation. But it was the start of a difficult time for her. Ten months after Corey Clark made his claim, rumors of Paula drinking on Idol erupted. The night she foolishly repeated some gibberish Simon told her. The moth who finds 
the melon. <laughs> no, finds the cornflake. Finds the cornflake, always, always finds, finds the, melon. the melon. And one, what? Of, one of you didn't get the right... Um, After the show, the press pounced. Simon, she says, added fuel to the fire. He's like, now you know what in, in her Coca-Cola cup, what, it's not Coca-Cola. All of a sudden, unbeknownst to me, I, I am now part of a funny joke that's gone so far. But when her reality show, Hey Paula, hit the airwaves nearly a year and a half later, something did seem terribly wrong. I need help. Do you guys understand that or do I need to explain more? I want to talk to you about some of the video that's out there. I mean, including the Paula reality show. Oh, yes. Mistake? I honestly th think it was the biggest mistake. Why'd you do it? It was about celebrating all the many hats that I wear that you don't see on American but Idol. But that's It all changed. It all changed, and it's Because started. with respect, you look many times during this broadcast. Loopy would be the nicest way to put it. Sex pot, let me tell you that, and every, every man's going to want to smell, smell that. When I looked at these tapes all together... When I looked at them, I couldn't believe what I'm seeing. I said to myself, what would Paula say about this girl that she was looking at? I, I tell you, I was, I was that angry. The I was girl that rage. you see on the tape looks like she needs help from somebody. I've never been addicted to any prescription drugs. I've never been drunk. I've worked my whole life. I sacrificed being a normal girl and not having the ability to have proper relationships, not being able to be a mom, a real mom. I am fortunate and feel completely blessed, but I'm not the girl that's in those tapes. That is plotting, scheming, and editing, and I understand the power of the media. But on the reality show, there are lots of moments where you don't look like you're really there. Your eyes are closing, your head is falling back. Because I'm falling asleep and a camera's on me? I don't have anything that's shameful. I don't have anything to be embarrassed about. That was not accurate d documentation of my life. There are some pretty weird moments on Idol as well. This one a year ago. David, you are ridiculous. I want to just squish you, squeeze your head off, and dangle you from my rearview mirror. Paula's explanation for her sometimes unusual behavior, she's wiped out, exhausted, and in excruciating pain from a neck injury she suffered, she says, in a plane crash back in 1992, an injury she hid at the time. I didn't want anyone to feel bad for me. I didn't want anyone to count me out. And the worst thing I could have done has been silent about it. I would never do that again. Over the past 17 years, she says, there have been 15 surgeries. Where are the scars? Look at you. There's they're, one good one. They're, they're kind of hidden. All right, take a look. Nevertheless, Paula says Simon's joke that she was drinking on the air seemed to stick. I've never been drunk in my life. Ever. Never. Ever. And all of a sudden now... My credibility, my reputation, everything that I've worked so hard since birth is questionable, and not even questionable. People are adamant that what, what he said is true. Well, people are still adamant that what he said is true. There are a lot of people who still think you're covering up. There are a lot of people who think, accept the idea that you had pain over the course of all these years. True and have but, tried to deal with that pain by taking prescription drugs, not recreational drugs, and that through exhaustion and pain and prescription medication... I had a broken neck. I had to take nerve medicine for my spinal cord, but I would not take medicine that altered my mood. Are you sure? I, I'm telling let me explain. let me explain to you. Because of the pain, though, I lost hours and hours, hundreds of hours of sleep. Sometime on the, sometimes on the road, there'd be, I'd be up the entire night. I could not find a comfortable place to sleep. 
everything was so painful. In fact, it got so bad, Paula says she had her doctors go to speak to idol producers and explain that she was in chronic pain. The doctor said to the producers, when this is happening, be mindful of it and respectful that she may start chattering away with her teeth because the spinal cord fluid, or if she hasn't slept, she's got to feel confident and comfortable that she lets you know, be mind, I have not slept. Therefore, cover me and protect me. It's not my fault. Well, they say that they did, and I say, well, that's questionable. So, I guess my question to you is, I mean, there'd be no dishonor in taking pain medication if you're in I'm pain. not, I, no, I have to, I, I have to, I just came out of my 15th surgery. I have to take... Vicodin, no. Oxycontin, no. those drugs? No, 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 no. We will not take those drugs. And you can check my medical records. There is nothing like that. I'm off every single... I never was on an Oxycontin or Vicodin or any of that. I was on nerve medicine and anti-inflammatories.